Every day with Jesus, sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me. He's the one that I adore. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me. He's the one that I adore. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me. He's the one that I adore. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me. He's the one that I adore. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me. He's the one that I adore. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Well, God bless you, Sister Kathy. God bless you and Brother Butler. Good morning, Lady Holden. God bless you and Bishop. Good morning, Sister Riley. Good morning, Bailey. God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Elder and Sister Adams. Good morning, Sister Mary. Good morning, Sister Caldwell, good morning, Elder Brown. God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you. Good morning, Missionary Leah. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. Good morning, Mother Fears. God bless you and Pastor Fears. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Sister Donaldson. Good morning, Sister Ford. Good morning, Bishop Designate Alde and Lady Alde. God bless you both. Good morning, Rosalind. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Mother Wilkins. God bless you and Deacon Wilkins. Good morning, Sister Gwen. God bless you and the Ned family. Good morning, Thomasina. Good morning, Sister Kinlock. Good morning, Sister um, Janice. Good morning, Missionary Bryant. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Dawes. God bless you and Minister Dawes. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Brandy. God bless you. Good morning, Duchess. Good morning, Kamalita. Good morning, Mother McCall. God bless you. We're praying for your continued recovery. Good morning, Sister Sylvia. God bless you. We're praying for you and your family. God bless you, Deacon Grant. Good morning, Sister Frederick. Good morning, Elder Bailey. God bless you and Mother Bailey. Good morning, Mother Nicholson. Good morning, Deacon Davis. God bless you and Mother Barbara. Good morning, Sister Elaine. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Sister Hopkins. Good morning, Crystal. Good morning, Monique. God bless you and the Donaldson family. Good morning, Sister Miriam. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Katina. Good morning, Kim Kimberly, good morning, Brother Paul. God bless you, sir. Good morning. Sister Davis, God bless you. And Deacon Davis, good morning, Sister Pedlar. Good morning, Sister Sarah. God bless you. Good morning, Caprice. Good morning, Sister Durham. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Roberts. Good morning, Natasha. How are you, my niece? Good morning, Sister Brenda. Good morning, Sister Edmund. Good morning, Lydia. God bless you. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Dion. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Batista. Good morning, Lashana. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the morning morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to see and witness the manifestation of the power of God working through prayer. God answering the prayers of his children. God strengthening us. God keeping us even in the midst of challenges and 
difficulties and tests and trials God has brought us through. You know, I'll be the first to say that 2022 has been a challenging year in so many respects. Challenging, challenging, challenging. But I am thanking God for the stability that prayer provides. Even as the waves of life seem to buffet and batter, God has kept us and I'm thanking God. I'm grateful this morning. Hallelujah. I'm not complaining about anything. I'm just thanking God for everything that he has done, and I am indeed grateful to the Lord. So as always, if you have a prayer request, would you please share it with us? If you're on Facebook, you can share it either in the chat, or you can inbox Reginald Davis, or you can inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can place it in the chat, or you can direct message Pastor R. JD. And if you're on the conference call, and thank God for our conference call listeners that join us each morning, if you're on the conference call or if you're on YouTube or anybody can use the text line, you can text your prayer request to 336 567 5358. Again, that number is 336-567-5358. Text those prayer requests. We are adding them to the prayer book, to the prayer list. And more importantly, we are praying with you and we are agreeing with you that God is going to bless you, your family, all those things that concern you. I believe in the power of prayer because prayer does indeed work. Let's go back to the word of God this morning. I want to return back to Jude chapter 1, and we were focused on verses 14 and 15. Jude chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and all of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. I want to continue today from the subject, the Lord cometh, the Lord cometh, the Lord cometh. The second coming of Jesus Christ is the most prophesied event um, in the scripture. Every book in some way or fashion points to the Messiah, points to the coming of Jesus Christ. We have experienced the first advent. You know, the Christmas celebration is a celebration of the first advent. It was prophesied throughout the Old Testament that the Messiah would be born, that he would be born in Bethlehem, that he would um, come out of the city of Nazareth, that he would um, be despised, that he would be rejected, that he would be turned away. Everything that we saw happens in the scripture. Definitely, we saw it with the coming of Jesus Christ. His crucifixion, his death, his sacrifice at Calvary was prophesied. And Jesus Christ himself said um, to the disciples, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And that where I am, there ye may be also. We have delineated yesterday between the rapture of the church and the second coming of Jesus Christ. And the primary element is the rapture is just for the saints, just for the saints, just for those who are found ready to meet the Lord. The Bible says he's coming as a thief in the night. He's coming um, without warning. He's coming just as the scripture declared concerning um, the 10 virgins, that five were wise and five were foolish, and but they all went to sleep. And if I wasn't prepared, I wouldn't go to sleep. If you knew the Lord was coming and you weren't prepared, that's the wrong time to go to sleep. But they went to sleep. Everybody went to sleep. And then the announcement came, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And the Bible says they all arose. They all got up 
and they all reached for their lamps. But the five foolish virgins who did not keep the oil, and that's a better phrase than put oil, they didn't keep the oil in their lamps. They went looking for the oil and they said, Give us some of your oil because our lamps have gone out. You know, I've, I've read and preached from that text many times, but one time I was looking at it and it said our lamps have gone out. That means at one point they had oil in their vessels, but they allowed their oil to dissipate. You have to stay in a constant readiness filled, filled, let me use that word, filled with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit because the bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. And if you're not prepared, you can't go. And that's why when they they went reaching towards the other virgins who had oil in their vessels and said, give us some of your oil, they said, we can't give you what we have. And you know what? You have just enough of the Holy Spirit so that you can make it. You have just enough of the Holy Spirit so that you can live. You have just enough of the Holy Spirit so that you can warn, but you don't have enough to give anybody out of your oil. That's why those wise virgins said, go and find some, find some. And while they were out looking for oil, the bridegroom came, took those that were ready. The foolish virgins got to the door, banged on the door, but the Bible says the door was shut. And what a horrible thing place to be in is while you're looking for Jesus, he's already come. While you're looking to find salvation, Jesus Christ has already come. You know, somebody's going to be caught unawares. Somebody's going to be caught without their works being done. Somebody's going to be caught, hallelujah, staying out there too long, waiting too long, delaying too long. That's why the Bible says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. The moment you hear, the moment you know no, you need to get ready. You don't need to drag your feet. You don't need to delay your activity, but you need to come and run to Jesus. If you need to repent, repent. If you need to re receive the Holy Spirit, receive the Holy Spirit. If you need to be baptized, be baptized, but do whatever you need to do so that when Jesus Christ comes, you are ready. What you don't want to do, oh God, is be found getting ready and the Lord has already come. That's what you don't want. You know, you know, I'm not going to be here, but I can only imagine how the, what church is going to be like the day after the rapture. The day after the rapture, people breaking into the church, people running to the altar, people crying at the altar because they realize that they have waited too late. And that's why the scripture is filled with warnings and admonitions and encouragements that we are ready to meet the Lord, that we are ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because after the rapture comes the tribulation, after the rapture comes the antichrist, after the rapture, the Antichrist takes over the world. The Bible says that the nations of the world are going to give themselves to the Antichrist and he's going to be the ruler of the world. And as he turns against Israel, because Israel will first acknowledge him as the Messiah, because he's going to allow them to rebuild the temple. Right now, there's a Muslim mosque on the site of, on a, on the site of Mount Zion. It's sitting there on Mount Zion, but somehow that mosque is going to be destroyed and removed, and they're going to begin rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. And the Antichrist is going to let them make their sacrifices. And then this is all in the scripture in, in 2 Thessalonians. Then he's going to walk in and say, don't worship Jehovah, worship me. And that's when they know that he's the false Messiah. That's when they know that he is not sent of God. But then he turns his attention and his anger upon Israel and all the nations under his authority are going to turn against Israel. And as they're fighting in the battle of Armageddon, the Bible says, then comes Jesus who plants his feet on the Mount of Olives. And that mount is going to split from the Mount of Olives to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And the Bible says it won't be like the rapture where he comes as a thief and snatches away people. But when he comes in the second coming, the Bible says every eye shall see him. Oh God, CNN is going to be there. 
Fox is going to be there. ABC, NBC is going to be there to see Jesus Christ return to the earth. And the Bible says he's coming back with the saints. Yes, you, me, everybody that's born again is coming back with the saints. Oh God, with Jesus Christ. And the Bible says we're coming to execute judgment upon all. If you don't know Jesus in grace, you will know him in judgment. Let me say that again. If you don't know Jesus Christ in grace, you will know him in judgment because judgment is sure. Judgment is assured. And the Bible says they're coming to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that they are ungodly. In other words, he's coming to reveal righteousness. You know, it's really weird now that people don't really, there are so many people out there that legitimately believe that their wrong is right. Let me say it again. There are so many people out there that legitimately believe that their wrong is right. That their wrong is right. That's why the Bible says in this, in verse 15, that they're going to convince Hallelujah. Convince, 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 show them, help them understand that they're wrong. Help them understand they're in their errors. Unfortunately, it's too late because they were apostates. I keep saying this, that you'd rather, and I, not that you want to be a backslider, but if you had to choose between being a backslider and being an apostate, you want to be a backslider because the backslider, all, all he or she has to do is return to Jesus Christ. Come to the altar. Rep Repent, repent, repent. Oh God, give your life back to the Lord and the Lord will receive you because the Bible says he is married to the backslider. He will restore. He will heal. He will revive. But when you become an apostate, you have bent your life into ungodliness. You have changed the veracity of the word, the truth of God into a lie. And he shares with us this, this, this profile of an apostate. Is in As I'm reading, I'm reading this, that first of all, they're ungodly. They're ungodly in their behavior, their attitudes, even in their speech, their deeds. He says they're ungodly among their ungodly, they're ungodly to their core. They're ungodly in their deeds. They're ungodly in what they commit. And they're even ungodly in how they have spoken against Jesus Christ. It's not enough for some people just not to believe, just not to be saved. They have to have the nerve to speak against the Lord of glory, to speak against their Savior, to speak against the God that is here to save them. So they're ungodly. They are morally pervert perverted. That means they're twisted in their morality. They call wrong right and right wrong. They deny Christ. They deny his deity. They deny his power. They deny his dominion. They defile their own flesh. They defile their own flesh with their ungodly behavior. They are rebellious in their behavior. They are so determined to do it their way that they refuse to follow God. It's not even about right or wrong. It's about the fact that no Nobody's going to tell me what to do. So they have this slant of rebellion that just simply guides and leads them. They revile angels. They are, the Bible says, filthy dreamers. They are ignorant in their thinking. They think they know things, but they really know nothing. They quote and they and they apostulate, expostulate rather, and they try to explain and tell you what the word says when they don't know the word themselves. They are corrupted in their own personality. They are corrupted. It's just like rotting food. They have this rottenness about their spirit and their soul. All of this is the spirit of the apostate. And the Bible says they're going, they're going to be judged. They're going to be judged. And that's why when people feel like they've gotten away when people feel like they've gotten by, let me tell you something. Just because you've gotten by, they used to say no church, just because you get by doesn't mean you want to get away. Judgment is sure. The Bible says it clearly. It's appointed unto man once to die and after death, the judgment. After death, the judgment. That's why Jesus Christ tasted death for every man. He tasted death for every believer so that when we die, as it says, 
said, we just go to sleep waiting for the rapture of the church, waiting to be translated from mortal to immortality, from corruption to incorruption. Everybody that was saved, everybody that loved God, everybody that was born again, they're waiting for that trump to sound. They're waiting for that trump to sound. They're waiting to be resurrected. They're waiting to be caught up to meet the Lord. Oh God, but if you die without Christ, hell is your portion. If you die without Christ, you're going to be lost. If I die without Christ, I'm going to be lost. That's why I urge everybody, hold on. Oh God, Ishanama, hold on. I understand sometimes this race is challenging. I understand this walk is difficult. I understand that sometimes we are oppressed and we are afflicted. I understand that sometimes, oh God, we're discouraged, but I'm here to encourage everybody to hang on because Jesus Christ is coming again soon. Don't allow anybody, anything, anyone to move you out of your place. Don't allow your oil to go out. Keep that fire burning on the inside. Oh God, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again into the yoke of bondage. And when the Lord comes, be found ready. You know what? His coming is so imminent that the writer John in Revelation says, let he that is holy be holy still. Let he that is righteous be righteous still. But then he said, let he that is unrighteous or he that is filthy be filthy still. What does that mean, Bishop? It means that you don't have a lot of time. That's what it means. It means we don't have a lot of time. So whatever state you're in, stay in that state of readiness. Stay at the altar. Stay under the blood. Ishanama. Stay connected with the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay in prayer. Stay in the word. Stay in worship. Stay in the ministry. Whatever you want to do for Christ, get it done because it's not long, saints. It's not long. Whatever you're going to do right now in this season, get it done. If you're going to preach, go preach. Stop saying, I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. If God has called you, go preach. If your goal is to witness, witness. If your goal is to pray, pray. But be found busy because the Lord cometh. People don't believe it, but trust the word of God. The Lord cometh. You don't have to trust my word. You just read it yourself. The Lord cometh and he's coming and we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Jesus Christ. Oh God, Jesus Christ is coming again soon. And we all need to be found in a place of readiness, ready to meet the Lord, ready to be raptured, ready, hallelujah, to see Jesus Christ in peace. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you today for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love, your kindness. Lord, you've been so immensely good to us that all we can say is thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Oh God, the keeper, the comforter that lives within us. Thank you, God, for allowing us to get prepared to join this great assembly of believers from all over the world. I thank you for them now. And I'm asking you to remember everybody on this prayer line. Lord, put your presence in the prayer room right now. Oh, God, to strengthen the saints, to bolster the people of God. My God, to give courage so that we know that we are in your presence. And God, we're praying today that you would remember every petition every request, every name that has been, my God, put there, everybody that needs deliverance, everybody that needs strength, everybody that needs your touch, God, that you would remember them because you are the God that saves, you are the God that delivers, you are the God that makes whole. God, I'm praying today for Miss Isabella. 
I'm praying for Mr. Ed. I'm praying for Ivy. I'm praying for the Eason children. I'm praying for Linda Bug's children. I'm praying for Valerie's grandson. I'm praying for Baron Stooks today. God, I'm lifting up the unsaved. Now, the unsaved everywhere. All of us have unsaved loved ones, unsaved friends, people that we know that need to know you. God, I'm praying for them now that you would allow us to reach them, that you would reach them, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would cause them to to be convicted of their sins and to turn to you in repentance that they might be saved. Lord, baptize them. Oh my God, birth them through the water, birth them through the spirit and let them rise and live. Oh God, and walk in salvation. I'm praying for backsliders today. So many have drifted, so many have departed, but God, I'm praying that you would find them where they are, that you would deliver them, that you would restore them. My God, send them. Oh God, help out of their guilt, out of their shame, out of their transgression, release them from the forces that hold them in the mighty name of Jesus and God deliver them because we know that you're able. God, I'm praying today for Laquan. I'm praying for Ladrina. I'm praying for Travis, God. I'm praying for the Johnson family. I'm praying for Justin Edwards. I'm praying for the Northwood Estates. I'm praying for the Simpson family, the Ford family, the Haynes family, the Washington family. I'm praying for Mrs. Caroline Williams. I'm praying for the Thompson family, for Roberta Jenkins today, for the Graves family, the Amerson family, the Jones family, the Watson family, the Mingo family. God, send your deliverance now. Everywhere that help is needed, God, send help. Everywhere, oh God, that faith is needed, Lord, grant faith. God, release and strengthen the people now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we're praying for the sick today everywhere, everywhere. God, we're praying for your healing virtue to be upon the people. God, I'm praying this morning for Marina today that you would touch and heal her body in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you're a healer. You're a bomb in Gilead, and we know that you're able. We're praying for Pastor Everett and Lady Portia Sanders. We're praying, my God, for Carmelita's sister. We're praying for anybody that's recovering from surgery. God, remember Deacon Grant in the name of Jesus, God, and free. Oh, God, heal his body from the pain now. Remember, my God, Roberta Jenkins. Remember Lynette. Remember Pastor and Lady Winston this morning. Remember Bishop D today. Remember, oh God, Aaron right now. Remember Seymour and Doris Staten. Remember Aunt Ida, Aunt Irma. Remember Crystal Spencer today. Remember Noah. Remember Elder Nate Huntley today. Remember, my God, Dr. Hayward's mother this morning. My God, remember my Aunt Clara. My God, send your healing virtue in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody, oh God, on the prayer list that's sick, Lord, bring healing to their bodies now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for Bishop Alfonso Brooks. We pray, oh God, for Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell today. God, we're praying for your healing virtue to be extended to Mother Carol Coleman today. We're praying for Bishop Mac Vincent, Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Apostle Leroy Joseph today. Apostle, my God, remember Apostle Charles Williams, everybody, everywhere that is sick, Lord, stretch out your hand. Remember, my God, Hallelujah, Brother Wiggins, Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today with your healing hand. Remember them, touch them, strengthen them by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, I'm praying that you would sustain so many, God, that are sick. Lord, touch them, strengthen their bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, my God, Dr. Haywood, Mrs. Haywood. Remember, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Mother Jill, Mother Pride. Remember, my God, Mother Chambers, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead. God, remember, Lady Lady Staten today. Remember Margie in the name of Jesus Christ with your healing virtue. God, Lord, strengthen and create recovery. My God, for Pastor Carr, Minister Carr, Elder Tyson, Elder Smith in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff. Lord, touch them in the name of Jesus. Remember Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons. Lord, stretch out your healing hand. My God, remember Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess in the name of Jesus Christ because we know that you are a healer. My God, remember Lord God, hallelujah, remember Marlette, remember Maurice, remember Dennis today, remember my God, hold everybody that's sick everywhere, Tony, my God, Kimberly, Chris, Lord, walk into every hospital, every nursing home, every rehab center, everywhere, God, somebody's recovering, Lord, the ICU unit, the dialysis unit, God, remember, oh God, the COVID ward, the cancer ward, and bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying for any 
anybody that's watching this morning, that you would touch them with your hand of love and mercy, and God, heal right now in Jesus' name. God, I'm praying today that you would look on grieving families everywhere, everywhere, God. Somebody has lost a loved one. Somebody has lost someone they care for. God, they're grieving. They're hurting. There's a void. There's a missing place in the family, but I'm praying that you would come in, my God, and grant the peace that passive all understanding. Grant your mercy and your grace upon those that are grieving today. Remember, my God, hallelujah, Margaret Speller, the Sherrod family, the Baylock family, the Bond and Johnson family, Faye Wilder. Remember Pastor Chance this morning. Remember Douglas Baysmore. Remember your Mora. Hallelujah. Remember the Smith family. Remember Janice Haynes more. Remember the families of suicide victims. Remember Montel and Denise Davis. Remember Mike McCoy and his family. God, everybody everywhere that is grieving losses, we pray for their comfort now. God, remember, my God, Lady Andrea Maxwell and the Maxwell family. Remember Dr. Phyllis Carter and the Carter family. God, in your name, remember Bishop Michael Fields Shekinah and the Fields Green family. God, we pray for Mother Ida Harrell, the Harrell family. We pray, my God, for Mother Jacqueline Grant and the Grant family. God, stretch out your hand of mercy and comfort in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember the Groover family. Remember the Hargrove family, the Blunt family. Everybody everywhere that's grieving, God, cover them now. Remember the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. Remember, my God, the Meadows family. Remember, oh God, hallelujah, the Moyers. Remember the Perkins family. Remember the Dockery family. Remember Pam, oh God, her mother and her sisters now. God, we pray strength for the White family. Everybody that's grieving. Remember Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. Margie and the McLean, Melvin and Street families. God, remember, my God, the Jackson family, the Ned family. Remember the Newkirk family, God. Remember the Ransom family. Remember Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. Remember Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family. Lord, people everywhere that just need comfort, Lord, comfort and meet them at their point of need. Remember the Alan Williams family. We pray grace for Trell and Ryan. Remember, my God, hallelujah, the Clark family. We pray for Tommy and Michelle. God, stretch out your mighty hand. Oh, Shandi and touch and comfort and strengthen now. Remember the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family. Remember the Winninghams, the Bankses today. God, remember the Middletons and the Taylors. God, help them in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, my God, the Felix family, the Zapata family, the Mannix, the Boodrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs. Remember Lady Mannix in a special way. Remember Pastor Stevens. Remember, my God, the Matherins, the Briggs family, the Josephs, the Taylors, everybody that's grieving. Remember the Davises, God. Hallelujah, the Allens, the Caldwells. Remember, my God. Oh, God, the Hayses, the Moors today. My God, I pray your grace upon the Harbisons. Oh, God, upon the Austins and the Adams family. Every grieving widow, widower, child, parent. God, give comfort. Every loved one, give comfort now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying today that you remember the body of Christ. Every apostle prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every, oh God, first lady, every pastor's child today. Remember, Lord, every mother and missionary, every minister and deacon, every mashanare, young person in the church, God. Remember every musician, singer, and psalmist. Lord, give strength to the church. Give awareness to the church. Let us be mindful of the time and the season so that we are found ready to meet you, God. Lord, strengthen us. Hashiach, Messiah. Oh, God, that we might live for you today. God, I'm praying today for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I'm praying today that you would remember, my God, school employees and students everywhere. I'm praying for your grace, my God, to be upon everybody. Oh, God, as we move and travel, so many diseases, RSV, flu, COVID is out and among us. But I'm praying that you would cover and protect those that are uninfected. Infected, and I'm praying for your healing upon the infected. Lord, I'm praying that you remember everybody that works in banks and stores and offices, clinics and hospitals, nursing homes. God, cover with your precious blood in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, as you're healing, oh God, sickness and disease, Lord, heal the land. Heal the land from sin. Heal the land from violence. Heal the land from hatred, from jealousy. Heal the land from injustice. Heal the land from racism, from sexism. And let the church 
church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, we need you to keep us. Oh, God, keep us, keep us, keep us, and let us stay ready to meet you. Keep us this day. Protect us and guide us. And we give your name the glory. The honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on. Let's give God praise right now. Everybody on this line, come on, join me in giving God praise. Come on, let's give God the glory. Let's give him the honor. Let's give him the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. This is my declaration for today. Lord, don't let my lamp go out. You are coming soon. Lord, don't let my lamp go out. You are coming soon. You know, we are consumed by so many other things. We give attention to so many other things. But when are we considering our readiness to see the Lord Jesus Christ? When are we considering our readiness to be ready when Jesus Christ comes? Because my brothers, my sisters, the same way he came the first time and people weren't looking, he's coming the second time and people aren't looking. He said, it's just like as in the days of Noah, people are eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Hallelujah. But who's making preparation for their soul? Who's making preparation to be caught up, to be raptured? Hallelujah. Who's making preparation so that we see God in grace and not in judgment? Saints, we have to be ready. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Friday is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. It's also available through the conference call and thank God for our conference call listeners. Please keep coming back, keep sharing the number and keep joining us each morning at 630. You can stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud and Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also stay connected through our radio broadcast. It airs every day, Monday through Friday at 1130 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com beginning January 2nd. Beginning January 2nd, our new time is 8.30 a.m. Our new radio broadcast time is 8.30 a.m. in the morning. And you can join the radio broadcast, tell people about it, because the word of God is being preached. I want to thank everybody all year who has given, sown, seeded, and shared with this ministry. Your gifts have been a major blessing. And we thank God for each of you. And if and we need you to continue to be a blessing. And so if you desire to do so, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give online. Our website is Refuge Temple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, www.refugetemplenc.com, and you can give through the donate page. If you have the GiveLify app, you can share there. Just simply Search for Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church and you can make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign one refuge is our Cash App. And we thank you for your giving, but we thank you most of all. Everybody that shares in prayer, whether you come by the conference call or YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, thank you so much for being with us because people all over the world are being blessed because we pray each day. So please keep coming, keep sharing with others, and keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my father, pray for my sisters, pray for our nieces, our nephews, my in-laws, our entire family. Just hold us up 
up before the Lord. Pray for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us. And let's pray one for another that his grace might keep us, that his grace might guide us and sustain us, that we might be found ready when the Lord comes. The Lord keep you mindful of his coming. The Lord keep you in a constant state of readiness. The Lord make it possible that you are with him in peace and not in judgment. The Lord bless you today. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom, shalom.